All right, folks, so every year I do a video that kind of goes over my traditional bow hunting setup that I'm gonna be using for that year. Elk season is just around the corner, but I'm gonna go through my bow, arrows, quiver, tab, broadheads, pretty much everything. I'm gonna tell you about it, tell you why I've settled on these different things, and then uh, this is actually going to be Liz's first year bow hunting, and so I'm going to quickly go over the setup that she's going to be using. So with that, let's get started. All right, so we'll start with the bow. This bow is 64 inches overall. It is 63 pounds, approximately 63 pounds at 29 inches, and it is a fire-hardened hickory. I made this bow last winter after going up and spending some time with Keith Shannon and Thad Beckham. Those guys are really doing some cool stuff with white woods and uh, fire hardening and showing how you can make really good high quality good performing bows out of woods that have always been thought of as kind of second string bow woods. I've done some videos on fire hardening, but then Keith and Thad have also done some. So if you haven't checked out and you're interested in the process, go over there, check some of those things out. I'll link to them in the video description. So this bow is a little bit on the heavy side for me. I typically shoot bows that are in the high 50s. This one's coming out at 63 at 29, but I still shoot it pretty well. And it's got plenty of punch for elk. So this is an all wooden bow without a backing, so it technically is a self bow. It is more of a modern design as opposed to a primitive design because it does have an arrow shelf cut into it and it's cut pretty close to center. So there's a couple of problems with hickory. One is it tends to soak up humidity or environmental moisture. And two, it tends to take set or string follow. And those two things can be very closely related and dependent upon one another uh, in the right situation. So let me just unstring this thing and tell you, show you what I'm talking about. So you'll see when I unstring this bow, it comes back pretty flat, but the tips are just a fraction of an inch behind the handle. Now, if I let this thing set, those tips will come in front of the handle a little bit. But when I first made this bow, it had about three inches of back set. But even though it's lost a lot of its back set, the bow still shoots really well and it's got plenty of punch for elk. See our little piggies are coming for a visit here. The other problem with hickory is it is an absolute sponge for humidity. And if, you, if your bow soaks up a lot of humidity, that'll cause it to take more set. And so the fire hardening helps with that, but it certainly, in my experience anyway, does not cure hickory's problem with moisture. And so for this bow, I've really, really put a lot of sealer on there. I've probably got 10 coats of polyurethane and really built that, that sealer up to try to seal this against the elements. So right now with these arrows, which weigh about 660 grains, this bow is shooting right at about 162 feet per second, which is not super fast. I've made bows that shoot way on up towards 180 and even higher than that, but that's still plenty for hunting. All right, so we'll real quickly talk about the bowstring here. This is something that I get questions about on occasion. Um, there's some stuff that's been written in the past that says that you need to use something like B50 or B55 on self bows because it does have a little bit of stretch and helps to protect the bows. Personally, I've never found that to be the case and I like a lower stretch bowstring material. And so I make all of my strings now out of D90. Uh, and this, if I recall correctly, this is 14 strands of D90 Flemish twist bowstring, and it's got a 0.03 halo serving, and that fits a Bonding Classic knock pretty doggone well. Now, I've got a double knock set on this bow. I've got one above and one below, and I've got a different video, which I'll link to, that shows you how I tie these knocks. Now, the reason I have two knock sets on here is First of all, it's very easy when I'm in a hunting situation to feel those knocks. I don't even have to look at it and get my arrow knocked in the right place. I know it's always in the right place. I don't have to worry about it sliding down. And then the other reason is that when this uh, bow is strung, 
I take my tab and I slide it right up the string until it hits the bottom of the bottom knock. And that brings my string hand down the string just a little bit, which raises the back of that arrow up, gets it closer to my eye, and that aids me in aiming. If you don't know how all that works, I've got other videos on here that talk all about how I aim, how I use my string hand position on the string to help with that. So I'll link to that in the video description and I'll put a card up here. So on the string, you notice I have these little puffy balls here. This is just wool yarn that I take two nails that are about two and a half inches or so apart. I wind yarn around it. I tie the middle and then I cut the ends and then I split the bowstring, the two plies of the bowstring, slip that in there, tie it in, and then pluck the bowstring a couple of times and it really fuzzes those things out. That helps with the twang of the bowstring. I don't use them on all my bows, but for this bow, it was a little bit loud. So I went ahead and put the string silencers in there and it really quietened the bow down. On the bow's arrow shelf and sight window here, I'm using the soft side of Velcro. You can buy this stuff in like two inch, two and a half inch strips from any hardware store, Walmart, uh, or you can order it on Amazon. Take that stuff, peel it off, stick it on there, and then you can trim it to fit into the shelf and the sight window. It's very silent. It makes a great uh, rest and sight window material. I love this stuff. It's easy to replace and it's cheap. All right, so we'll go ahead and talk about my arrows. So these are tail tapered Doug fur shafts that I got from Carson over at Sherwood Shafts. Doug fur is probably one of the most durable, natural uh, arrow shaftings out there. I do have a crown dip on these and I like pink fletchings because there is nothing else in the woods that is this color. And if you see pink sticking up out there, you'll know that it's your arrow. I've used yellow fletchings in the past and yellow fletchings are great, except for in late September in the mountains where you have aspen because these aspen trees behind me here, the leaves will turn bright yellow and your arrow fletchings just blend right in with those things. And so I moved from yellow to pink because like I said, there is absolutely nothing out there this color and they're very easy to find. The, uh, the crown dip and in combination with the pink fletchings makes this pretty easy to track in flight so that you get a better idea of where your arrow's impacting or where your arrow goes. That is very, very important. Anything that you can do to brighten up the end of this arrow so that you can track this arrow in flight is going to give you a better idea of where your arrow impacts on the animal and so you have a better idea of how long you need to wait to follow that animal up. So I buy the shafts, I buy the pink fletchings from Three Rivers and then these natural barred feathers, I just make these myself. And then I make the arrows up with my fletching jigs and the components that I have here at the house. So these shafts are 11 30 seconds to 5 16th, so just a, a small bit of taper. But I like the taper because it does remove a little bit of weight from the back end of the shaft helps to push that weight just a little bit more forward. And I also feel like it just helps with the potential of getting a full pass through, which is always nice. It's nice when you can find your arrow and see what kind of blood or other materials might be on the arrow and give you also a better idea of how long you need to wait to follow that shot up. Now I would recommend to anybody getting a true cut on contact broadhead, but within that cut on contact um, category, you could go with two blade like I've got here, or you could go with a three blade like a woodsman or something like that, which are great heads, but they do require a little bit more punch to actually get that arrow all the way through. And with these lower speeds on these traditional bows like this, and especially with the self bows, I like a cut on contact two blade, razor sharp. That's very, very important that your broadheads need to be razor sharp, but cut on contact razor sharp broadhead because I personally would rather have a complete pass through than have three cut surfaces and not have as high a chance of getting a pass through that you might get with a three blade broadhead. 
So the quivers that I use, these are made by Creek Walker Trading, Donnie Wilkerson down in Florida. Great guy, makes a really good quiver. And the attachment are with these rubber bands that come from Great Northern, I believe. It's super solid. Like once you put this on your bow, it's not gonna come loose. It doesn't wiggle. Uh, it doesn't make any noise. Uh, they're just really good quivers. So the tab, that I use is something I also get a lot of questions about, but there's really nothing special about this tab. This is something that I made. I personally don't think that there's, for me anyway, there's not, um, I don't put a lot of thought into my tab. This is just uh, something that I made. It's got buckskin on the back and some sort of slick leather on the front. I'm not sure what this is. It's not, it's not Cordura, but it's something very similar. I got that from Andy Ponce over at Addictive Archery. I'm not sure if you could get some from them or not, um, but they're pretty easy to make and it's a relatively thin tab. But like I said, when I put my fingers on this string, I slide it up until the tab hits the bottom of that bottom knock and that's where I draw from. So I did take this bow out hunting uh, hogs a couple of times back in the early spring down in Florida, but this is gonna be the first uh, Western big game hunting that I've done with this particular bow. So elk season is just around the corner and so I'm excited to take this hickory bow out. I've never bow hunted elk with a hickory bow and so it'll be interesting to see how it holds up throughout the season because elk season for me is very hard on a self bow because I'm out hunting every day for eight to 10 hours a day. And a lot of the times I'll leave this thing strung up pretty much all the time. And so for a self bow, that's, that's pretty hard on them. And it's a, uh, it's pretty demanding type of hunting, but uh, I'm excited to see if I can get an elk with this hickory longbow. All right. So this is going to be Liz's first year bow hunting. Now she's actually made a self bow, but she can't draw a bow that's heavy enough for hunting. She's got a shoulder injury. So we went ahead and got her a compound, went to the local archery shop, got a Matthews Prima. Now I'm going to go ahead and admit I am kind of a noob when it comes to compound bows. And so it took me a little while to figure out how to tune this thing. Um, tried to get some arrows that I felt comfortable with her hunting with that also tuned well out of the bow. Uh, the arrows that I decided to go with, these are a micro diameter shaft. So these are the VAP Elites uh, 300 spine, which might seem a little bit stiff for a, a bow of this weight, but I needed a spine or a stiffer arrow to handle the higher FOC. So I've got 200 grains up front with the, uh, the broadhead and the insert outsert here. These are single bevel cut on contact uh, grizzly broadheads, which are really nice heads. They're not super sharp out of the pack, but uh, I'll touch them up and get these things razor sharp before she goes into the woods with them. I wanted a micro diameter shaft because there's a big difference in my experience anyway, there's a big difference in the amount of penetration that you can get with these smaller diameter shafts versus uh, a fatter standard diameter shaft. Now, on, I don't have that option to shoot uh, a micro, di micro diameter wooden shaft because it just doesn't exist. Uh, if I did, I would. But with this setup, with the, uh, the higher FOC, the micro diameter shaft, the well-tuned good flying arrows out of a 40 pound bow, uh, I feel very confident with her shooting something as big as a, a pretty good bull elk. So this is going to be her first season bow hunting. We've been out shooting every day and she's getting a little bit more comfortable with the bow, but we're still going to have to keep those shots pretty doggone close. I'm thinking 20 yards and under, but we'll try our best to get an elk uh, within that distance for her. So there you go, about as opposite ends of the spectrum as you can get, but they're both going on this elk hunt this year, and hopefully we can get out with both of them. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. If you have any questions about anything that I covered here, um, the self bow, the arrows, um, even the compound, if you got questions about that, I'll try to answer them. Can't promise that I'll, uh, that I'll give you a good answer, but I'll try. 
Um, and with that, we've got more videos coming up. Uh, gonna be doing a pack dump video. Uh, probably gonna be doing a video on how to do rig up a block and tackle system in case you're out in the woods by yourself and you need to move a big animal, which tends to happen uh, sometimes when you solo hunt in the mountains. Um, maybe do an arrow building video, but anyway, we got, we got more stuff coming up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We'll see y'all next time.